With its dual BIOS, 10 plus 2 power phase delivery, RGB ACX 3.0 cooler, and factory overclock, the EVGA GTX 1070 and 1080 for the win are excellent choices for gamers who demand the best. Learn more by following the link down below. So last month, I built a gaming PC for under $400, including tax. Although it was with Micro Center parts, it was still my money and we did it for under 400 bucks. The problem is a lot of you guys were really mad about the processor that I chose, the Athlon 5350, because admittedly it is extremely underpowered. But it got us by and it was able to play games like Doom with no problem. Well, what happens if you set aside about an extra 200 bucks? Well, you pick yourself up an AMD 8320E, a T4 cooler from Cooler Master, and a Gigabyte UD3 motherboard, 990FXA, allowing for a little bit of overclocking. The best part is you could probably find someone that wants to buy this CPU and motherboard combo for 30, 40 bucks, building some sort of a internet browsing machine or a word processing machine of some sort, and you can do this whole upgrade for less than $150 if you get some cash back from that. So let's go ahead and put this thing in, let's see how well it performs, and let's see just what you get for about a $550 gaming PC. Well, that wasn't so hard. You know the crappy part though about working in lower end hardware is you cut the shit out of yourself because they don't have refined edges and stuff, they're sharp. My God, I have made plenty of sacrifices to the PC gods today. Blood sacrifices have been made. A Couple things you might've noticed though is I have moved the rear exhaust fan to the top of the case and then I have the cooler pulling air through and out the top of the case. I'm trying to promote a directional airflow when we go in the front of the case, through the cooler and out the top, since I didn't add any more case fans. And because we are gonna be dealing with a bit more heat than we were with the Athlon system, I want to make sure that without adding more money to the system and adding more fans, that we were able to at least have adequate directional airflow. If this was pushing air up to top and I had the exhaust fan in the rear trying to pull air out, that would be a split of air and we don't want that. Another thing too is I have not done a test boot on this yet. I wanted to do this test boot on camera. And the other thing I'm hoping here is that Windows is gonna detect all the new hardware, set itself up, and then we won't have to reinstall Windows and all of that crap. So anyway, let's go ahead and... Uh... Okay, it's on, it beeped. Well, it went because the hard drive started. Let's hope we get a hope we get a post here. It'd probably help if I showed you guys the monitor. Oh, blue light came on. Yay! I actually shouldn't be saying yay yet until Windows is actually doing its thing. Uh, you guys ask me all the time if it's possible to change out motherboards and CPUs and stuff without having to reinstall Windows. Most of the time, the answer is yes. Sometimes Windows is just a punk and doesn't want to detect the new hardware and reset up its registry and, and whatnot. This one looks like it's going to cooperate. I think, I don't know, let's see. It's thinking, you can see right there, it's, it's thinking, it's doing something. Oh, getting devices ready. Yay. All right, we'll come back when this is ready to test. A few moments later. Of course, the very first game we're gonna play here is Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Reason why is in the last video, we were able to get like 60 FPS on average, and a lot of competitive Counter-Strike Go players apparently watched this channel because many of them chimed in and was like, if you're not getting at least 150 FPS, it is completely unplayable. 
Um, I still completely disagree with you, but that's besides the point because remember, we are in the perspective here of this being a newcomer to gaming PCs and they're not gonna be achieving or even aspiring to get 150 FPS. Uh, they just wanna play the damn game, guys. So put the elitism aside for a little bit here and let's look at what the objective is. So anyway, here are the settings here. We have a color mode computer monitor. That's that's always good. We got monitors. Um, it autoed everything to high, mixture of very high. MSAA is at 2x. Uh, motion blur is disabled. So I think we've got some pretty good settings here. So as you can see, we are getting quite a bit of FPS here in CSGO. It doesn't take a lot of horsepower to run this game, which is why even the Athlon was able to achieve it at a you know anywhere between 50 and 60 FPS. But remember, that was a $40 CPU motherboard combo. Um, now that we are actually on, wow, I can't even jump up this thing. Now that we are actually on a decent CPU, I say decent because, you know, it is, you can see here that we are actually able to achieve some pretty damn good frame rates. And I am so bad at this game. You really shouldn't be judging me. Yeah, I see this as being pretty damn playable. I'm about to get my ass kicked, I'm sure. Ha, thought you were gonna knife me, didn't you? Yes, you did. You thought you were gonna knife me. I don't think so, bitch. Ah, oh, I was expecting that. All right, so next up, we're gonna play some Doom here. You can see the FPS up here in the corner. And we'll go to settings. Let's see what our settings are here. So we've default, what is 1400 by 1050? That's a weird resolution. Gosh, it's weird. It's because it went four by three. Holy hell, why did it do that? Ah, I can't click on things. I suck. All right, we don't want 4K. Although I bet you it could actually play 4K. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, vertical sync is off. Anti-aliasing is on SMAA. We'll leave it there. And uh, advanced settings here. Let's go ahead and get the guy to reload. All right. Advanced settings here. Wow, it even went to Nightmare on shadow quality. You've got to be kidding me. No, we are not going to try Nightmare. I don't think it's possible. There. Jeez. I think this thing is being a little bit ambitious. One thing I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to put motion blur to low. I don't like that motion blur shit. Well, I do, but I don't, if that makes sense. All right, so pretty much... All right, let's do an ultra. We'll just do ultra preset. That way you guys can follow along at home. And here's what we got. So you can see so far, FPS up in the corner there, we are achieving greater than 60 FPS with ultra settings. On Vulcan, you can see the explosions aren't really hurting anything here. Wow, the explosions aren't hurting nothing here. That. Take, I'll take that. Logan does amazing things for games, I'm telling you. Hi there. You got killed with a plasma pistol thingy. Well, I got no complaints about this FPS here. Look at, look at all this lighting, this geometric lighting and stuff happening here. And yet the FPS are amazing. Well, if the menu is any indication, we might see a, a decent improvement. That'd be cool, huh? All right, so what are the settings? Last time we dropped these settings all around to try and figure out why we were getting terrible FPS, but it just, for whatever reason, I think it was just CPU bottlenecked big time. So let's go to our video settings here. Oh, wow, look at that. It gets all confused, I swear. Full screen's on, multi-sampling's on, refresh rate, 59, V-Sync off, there we go. Preset, we're gonna go here to Ultra. Let's just run the benchmark test and see what it says. So that has definitely come a long way from the 20 to 30 FPS it was getting in low settings. Right now in ultra, you can see we're getting about mm, almost 60 FPS. And in some parts you can see here we go over 60 FPS and others you can see we go down uh, to the high 40s, which is still not great. But remember we are on ultra on a 380X and Dirt Rally is considered to be kind of demanding when you have the tree density turned up, which we do right now, especially with it being on ultra. Okay, so I've dropped the preset to high. 
And uh, let's go ahead and go into benchmark mode. Let's see if we get any immediate improvements. Not a whole lot of change, honestly. I mean, we're going up into the 70s here a little bit, um, but it started off in the 50s. See, it goes all the way down to the 40s right there. Now this is a benchmark test. It is kind of considered demanding, I guess. I don't know, it uses a game engine, so that's why I'm okay with using the benchmark on this. But we are getting, you know, 60-ish FPS, a little bit higher than that, a little bit lower than that at some points. But we've come up quite a ways if you consider the fact that we were in the 20s and 30s on the Athlon CPU. So this is definitely money well spent in this upgrade right here. Well, there you have it, dumping about another 150-ish dollars back into this system. And I say 150, because like I said, you can get some money back for the other CPU and motherboard. Someone out there would spend 40 bucks on that. I did, heck. But anyway, you can see, it brought our gaming experience up quite a bit and we still have not broken the bank considering the overall price on this PC is right around $550, including tax. That is not bad whatsoever. Now let's talk about something real quick because I know folks are gonna be out there saying, why'd you go with an AM3 Plus motherboard or why'd you go with the AM3 Plus socket? Because there's no upgrade path. You're right, right now with the exception of maybe FM2 Plus on AMD, none of the enthusiast grade or gaming grade stuff like AM3 Plus has any sort of upgrade future whatsoever. But you can see we still got a huge improvement in performance. Now this might all come in a really weird time considering we are right on the cusp of Zen finally launching with AMD. But just because Zen is launching doesn't mean people are necessarily gonna be able to afford it. Who knows what the price point is gonna be? So the timing of all of this build might seem really strange, but I think a lot of people are not able to shop in the latest and greatest when it comes to their price point. So that still makes a build like this completely relevant. And again, I'm gonna say it again for 550 bucks, an amazing gaming experience. And because of the way we did it the first time around, we didn't have to upgrade the power supply or the graphics card or the memory or the case or the hard drive. Now, obviously the next step from here, I think would be putting in an SSD because load times are a little bit painful when you're loading on a hard drive. Even though it is a 7,200 RPM, 64 megabyte cache, it is still a hard drive. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching as always. I hope this video has helped you and I hope it makes you want to go out there and do some gaming and realize you don't have to spend a lot of money. That's the point. You don't need to spend thousands of dollars on a gaming PC. It's fun. It's definitely fun. There's no doubt about that, but it's not necessary. Share this video with someone you think it'll help. And uh, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Oh, and if you do want to win a GTX 1080, I'm doing a giveaway right now. You guys will definitely want to go and check out my channel. If you're new around here, I am giving away a GTX 1080. In fact, it's right here. Yeah. So this graphics card costs more than this whole system. You know you want it. I'm over here telling you, you don't have to spend a lot of money. And now I'm like, I'm gonna give away a graphics card that costs more than this whole computer. Jay's a hypocrite.